done too much scroll, done too much scroll. Clay, Clay. Yes, yes, yes. We have to be very quiet now. Yes, we have to use sign language, which I don't know. It's sign language isn't going to really convey a, a podcast either. Um, but I just need to let you know that if we speak above a whisper, my wife is going to come busting in. Oh, almost. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, move the microphone. It almost made a loud noise. My wife is going to come busting in and she's going to rip me apart. And she literally just told me that a couple of minutes ago. So please let's keep the conversation to this level. Okay. I don't know because my voice carries even when I'm trying to whisper. As you can see, I could I could be right next to you at Slayer or something. You could hear everything because I broadcast it right into your cerebral cortex. Oh, it, it's a little bit like ASMR too. Whoa, you it know is. what? Just, Ooh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> wrong, wrong podcast, everybody. Wrong podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a cinematic suffering. I am Jason. I am Zakla. Why are we speaking in a French accent? Unless we're going to talk about that French movie, uh, The Under Paris, that everybody is. Just no, about. no, we're not going to talk about that, but uh, that shall be a discussion for another uh, episode for sure. Gotcha. And this episode, we are going to discuss a little movie, a prequel, if you would like, called A Quiet Place. Day one. Day one. Yes, it's a uh, very sh small film that's playing in every theater hour on the hour the past weekend and we both caught it along with i'm sure millions of other people yeah uh i i would say like the the theater i went into i i, I actually got out of work yesterday around 4 15 i rushed home this is 4 15 p.m by the way uh, not a.m not a.m and uh, i rushed home uh, I said, I'm going to the movies. I need to go see this film. My wife's like, have a good time. So I changed shirts, sprayed a little uh, uh, deodorant under the armpits, and then took off to the movie theater and got in right as the theatrical trailers were starting. So magnifique. I got there perfectly. Again, I'm slipping in the French accent. I popped. <laughs> you couldn't have timed it better. I, I can't even recall what... Uh what was in the uh, theater beforehand. I think they showed alien Romulus. That was one that stuck, stuck out and a smile too, which whatever, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't seen smile one, but uh smile two looks even more absurd than the theatrical trailer I saw for the first one. So, yeah, but uh yeah, well, we saw a quiet place. Uh, so before we jump into all that, uh, have you seen, obviously you've seen the first quiet place that came out with John Krasinski, Krasinski starring, but he also helped write um, this one, the sequel, and uh, the prequel here. Yes, well, he he helped write that one. He directed the first two movies, and uh, Michael, who has got a very different, uh, very similar name, actually. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Uh, this whispery third installment was directed by Michael Sar Sarnowski. And my, Michael Sarnowski uh, has a, quite a weird back log of directorial credits i mean the one that i recognize is pig that starred nicholas cage from 2021 and then he did uh, i guess a tv series in 2012 2012 uh, another movie a short movie called that and then there's another tv series called fight night legacy so he doesn't have a lot of movies under his belt um I was diverting just a little bit. I wanted to see how you uh, how you came across the first one, the 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 first quiet a quiet place. It was just so in the zeitgeist. Everybody was kind of talking about it, or at least they were on social media. It seemed to have a, a pretty make a pretty big splash there. Um, I saw it after a lot of the annoying clones has started to come out. I think uh, in one movie, you, you couldn't expel gas. Another one, you had to uh, you had to speak backwards. And then in another one, you had to put a blindfold on, which is that was about Bird the Box. dumbest shit that I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that was Bird Box for sure. There's also the uh, C, the one where the guy, the blind man owns a house and these two, these kids break in and they get just get trapped in there and he's He's blind, but he's managing to trap them and kill them all. Uh, uh, don't breathe. That was uh, don't Fetty breathe. Alvarez. Yeah, yeah, and, which I enjoyed. I, I, I like that one. one a lot. Yeah. Um. So yeah, a quiet place for me. I, I 
I remember when it came out in the theaters, uh, my wife actually went to go see it before I did. Uh, I think it was just one of those days she was bored. I was at work and she, oh, I went and saw A Quiet Place. It was really good. You got to see it. And I'm, I'm like, okay. But I didn't see it until it came out in streaming. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is a really, really good movie. And I thought, you know, John Krasinski, I, I, I've always liked John Krasinski. You know, of course, we know him from The Office, but his, his roles are like in Jack Ryan and his other little guest starring appearances have always been great so i really yeah. enjoyed to see him dipping his toes into the horror genre and giving it his go yeah and um i i love that first movie too the second one i i didn't hate it at all it's for some reason it just didn't leave an impression like the first one did yeah. i guess um he was kind of the heart and soul of that movie he has such a an amazing amount of charisma his interaction with his deaf daughter was uh it was really classic. There were some really good moments in that movie. I like yeah. I, one part that stood out for me is when he's telling her, like, I'm, I'm trying my best to, to get you. What was he trying to do? He was trying to get her an, an ear, uh, a hearing aid. He was, yeah. He was yeah. Struggling with the battery and watching that moment of a struggling father wanting to give his daughter exactly what she needed and falling short was uh, stuck with me. Yeah. It, it had great character building and great characters all around that were just so in depth and, that you just loved and uh i i guess we'll i'll, pre I'll preface this with the uh, with day one here we we may be jumping into spoiler territory we can't guarantee that we're not going to reveal any spoilers so if you haven't watched it uh listener viewer beware with that said uh let's go ahead and jump into a quiet place day one hell yeah let's do it where's my notes where's my notes oh i'm panicking where's my notes <laughs> all right so uh so like I didn't Does know the cat die? That's that's the main, <laughs> that's the pressing question. Does it die? It gets messily eaten in the first five. Right, minutes, right. Just so. uh, you see this cat in the beginning, just gets ripped ripped apart. It, you hear you hear it shrieking, and it was horrible. No, there <laughs> there is. I didn't know what to expect from day one. To be honest with you, I, I thought it was going to suffer from prequelitis that yeah. a lot of uh, movies who try to go down this road suffer from. Um, I thought as a standalone movie that doesn't really connect any way with the first movie and the sequel that it was really good. This oh, yeah. is a, I, I, I came out of that theater thoroughly impressed and enjoyed what I witnessed and watched. And there are even some moments in this movie that I caught me in the feels. I remember sitting in the theater just yesterday and feeling some tears kind of brim up, you know? With, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It was it was great. Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o is she deserves her Oscar. She's yeah. such a good actor. Um, I'm blanking on. I should really keep my notes open right here. It would be a great way. Uh, Joseph Quinn um, oh, plays yeah. Eric, who's her sidekick, who we all know as uh, Eddie from the Stranger Things show. And you know, oh, like, I didn't realize that was him. Yeah, he yeah, was okay. he he was great and and uh he was great in that. He was he was really good in this. He was yeah. uh it, it you kind of know it going into it. He's going to kind of be the sidekick. He's her yeah. you know, like he's her counterpoint. But right from the get-go when they show you New York and they they um we meet our lead character who's dying of uh terminal cancer or some terminal disease that we find out. Yeah. And she's Part of her hospice situation is that they have therapy animals, and that's where we meet Frodo the cat. All right. And uh, the, the thing about Frodo the cat is this is I, Frodo is another character in this story that you love and you get to be close to. And the whole time you're thinking, please don't kill this fucking cat. You want <laughs> Frodo. To, but Frodo takes on this persona of. A familiar like uh, uh, some kind of witchcraft familiar it, it's it's this it's this being that kind of, i say a being because he, he kind of feels not just like a simple cat but he's leading the characters on he's an, an integral piece into this story that yeah. you know it, it, it tells about the character that reflects the characters themselves it's a black and white cat these are two characters that are you know physically black and white but there's also personalities <laughs> that are black you know that are black and white too you know uh, yeah and it, it it blended beautifully and that's again why i'm so surprised when i see the director only has these few credits under his belt that 
he pulled this off with i mean no i I know he wasn't didn't write it but you know he pulled off the visuals uh, amazingly yeah and i mean i think that um i think he had he had the benefit of having some really strong actors to work with everybody you know in front of the camera really knew knew what they were doing especially well even the co-stars you know you've got like some big uh, recognizable faces as yeah. just a lot of the extras in the, in the movie, but yeah, the way it was paced, the way they um, let you know the characters, they introduce them in a way that's a, immediately you can relate to, you yeah. can empathize with. Uh, and they didn't, they could have, uh, you know, done the whole terminal patient thing with too heavy a hand and they managed yeah. to avoid that too it was it it was really hard not to love this movie yeah and i i would say that there there's a part in the beginning where you know you're seeing these characters interact with each other and and then the, the hospice situation that our leak actor is in what does she play what was her name samira sam yeah uh, sam uh that you know it felt like that i now i'm not an expert on hospice situations, uh, not hostage just situations, which I am. An <laughs> yeah, neither. On. Oh yeah, yeah, plenty yeah. of those. I mean, I've negotiated a hundred of those. <laughs> All of them failed. But the when it comes to hospice <laughs> situations, I, it felt like they're in kind of like prison mode. Like, no, you can't do this. You can't uh, go get pizza in Harlem. And I, I was just thinking, well, wait a minute, she's dying of cancer. You think I'm a grown adult? I'm going to die. I'm going to go get my pizza and I'll meet you back at the hospice. You know, I, yeah. I, it, it felt like, no, get on the bus. You're going to go do this. And I was like, okay, like, that's I'm going to go across the bridge. I'll get an Uber there. I don't like, <laughs> I got terminal cancer. I'm not, you know, I'm not disabled. I'm not bedridden, you know, just it, let it's me funny have you here. say that. Cause I was, I was kind of wondering the same thing for a second. It's like, why well, she kind of got this uh, con- semi-confrontational relationship with the nurse and they were kind of just showing us who she is she's a little yeah. bit grumpy she's dying i'm sure we all going to be pretty grumpy about that time. yeah yeah i had i had no qualms with what her feelings were i was just wondering why they felt they needed to restrict her from doing certain things so it's yeah. like, dude she knows she's at the end she can do anything that she wants she can smoke crack she can have <laughs> she can have a, 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 a huge round pizza and just shove it in her belly <laughs> once it's... I, i'm gonna actually show i'm gonna gag myself on this pizza <laughs> while i take deep lung busters of coke rock yeah. cocaine and that's I, how i, I want to go out <laughs> I, I think that was, you know, that 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 motivation that we see in her because it, it is such a dismal outlook for her, and that we yeah. know that, you know, with the world is gone to shit immediately, and yeah. it's like, well, what does she want to do now? Uh, she really has no place in this new world because she knows she'll she'll become a burden if she has to be taken in by anybody. That you know, she will eventually just pass on. So uh, I was left in that mental journey with her as she tried to pursue this, yeah. her, her goal of getting this last piece of pizza from her favorite pizza place in Harlem, you know? Yeah. And it was wild. Like in the very beginning, there were multiple opportunities for the, the cat to just be gone forever. And he finds his way back to his people, which was, you, you, you could forgive it. It didn't there's take you out of the movie, but um, there's a little you know. suspension of disbelief you have to throw in there about the cat. You know, obviously these this this cat is beyond a regular cat. They really <laughs> established this is a this is a cat that has smarts. It knows where it wants to go, and it's it's like I said, it's like a guiding force. So I <laughs> I, I was willing to accept that. It, in my version of the movie, uh, would have gotten its tail bitten off by one of the creatures, and then you just see a scene where it's it's tying its own sutures and cutting the cord with its teeth, and then it 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 fashions a crude bayonet to go to battle with the face smashers. Or you whatever see its called. paws come up with you see its paws come up with a red bandana, starts tying yeah. her on its ears. <laughs> ching, 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 ching. No, yeah. Um, so there's another thing that I really that stood out to me after the entire movie was over um, when you see what's happening at the beginning. So in, in, I don't know if they explained it in the sequel about who these, what these creatures are, where they come from. It doesn't really matter though. No, it, if you're looking for some deep exploration of the plot of not the plot, but of the, um, you know, like the lore of the movie, they don't yeah. give it to you. It's almost, 
and the movie unapologetically makes it uh, secondary. But I do yeah. have theories, which we'll get into later. But I yeah. do have theories about w what's going on with all that. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, definitely make a note of that, and uh, we want to come back. Um, so I was thinking, and again, I know I bust on the Terrifier films like crazy. <laughs> every and, every opportunity. And my disgust of, uh, my well, my, my disgust, my, my meh-ness when it comes to <laughs> Art the Clown, where this is another situation where we know what these things are. Well, we know where they come from. It's, it, it looks like an asteroid. It was almost like a War of the Worlds. These things are just coming out of the sky, barreling into the earth, and boom, out comes these alien beings who are just, I guess, hell-bent on destroying or wiping out the planet. You know, whether that's through any kind of uh, in intellectual instinct on their own or maybe through some hive mind uh, thing, you know, it's it, we don't know that. But we do know where they come from and what they're doing specifically is just killing anything that makes, makes a sound. Uh, when you go to art, You've got all these people running around. He, he's got no motivation. <laughs> he's he, <laughs> yeah. We don't know where he comes from. We don't know why he's exactly doing this. So to me, all the killing seems senseless. But in this movie, all the kill killing makes sense. So yeah, that's, that's mean, my. I want to try to make a point to compare every <laughs> fucking movie I watch to Terrifier. By the way, so you know, don't get too tired of it. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, well, and I don't think that they have any malice. They're just mean creatures. They just seem like completely feral, uh, yeah. flesh shredding, um, mods. It'd be like if, uh, a lion had absolutely no smarts or empathy or even kind of self-awareness. It's just an eating machine. It's right. a kind of a shark on, on legs, yeah. you know, aesthetically, they don't do much for me honestly just because they they look kind of cool but they're um they look very derivative too it looks like they just took the demigorgon's head yeah. and put it on the cloverfield monster's body <laughs> so they got these long shanks and they you know they they scuttle around in a way that's kind of scary and you know that they're gonna eat your face but yeah, yeah. no I, I i i agree the the um the look of them didn't really impress me i i was glad there was cer there was certain thing there's a point in the in day one here where the mouth opens and you know our eric is like right next to the face and you see the the vocalization of the the vocal cords i guess inside this thing and it was really cool I like the way they depicted it yeah. it was dark enough and well lit enough that you could you knew it was cgi but you knew it, it looked real enough so it, it was really a cool feature yeah, it's like a micro shot of a uh, vocal cord or something. Like mm -hmm. you know, people how uh, they do those macro shots. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it was it, it was a, much like the other two. It was a very human centric movie. Um, you know, it was a, it was a story about how what you do with your final days and who you protect. Yeah. You know, like what what's your goal if you know that you have a very short amount of time to get there? Like what what would that do to you like what right. decisions would you make so there, there's also like a, a lot of there, there are several moral quandaries that they propose to the audience um you know when you see they're all in the theater at the beginning and our actor the uh what is this what is his name uh oh uh henry uh digimon honsu i think that's his name um uh uh they're all on the rooftops. They're watching the destruction of the city. And this guy comes up and he's just starts some, we're all gonna. And he's like yelling. And then uh, Henry just places his hand over this guy's head. And he's like, shh, shh, like, you know, <laughs> be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. And, and I'm thinking there's nothing he can do. If he takes his hand off this guy, he's going to keep screaming. If he doesn't, he's probably going to accidentally kill the guy. And he's looking down and it's Henry's, a uh, son is looking up at him, watching the whole situation. And then he finally tells his son to get the, you know, beat feet because you're about gonna... to see daddy kill a guy. Yeah. Man. And I don't think he <laughs> meant to kill the guy. I think he maybe just wanted to knock him out maybe. Yeah. And, and then when he, you know, you see him kill, kill this guy and the instant regret that comes over his face and, you know, that trauma in itself, you know, that's a moral quandary. Cause I don't know what yeah. I would do in a situation. If someone was started yelling and not, I don't know. Maybe instinct would just be. I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's like yeah. you'd, you'd have to be like, look, I, I, this is going to have to shake out. However, it does. Cause yeah, I, I can't have, there was not only his kid, but everybody else's kid was yeah. it a puppet show. That thing's full of kids. It's, 
Yeah, dude. I guess that dude's a hero if you like kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, there's, you know, there's, you know, you think like there's another part where the there's no power, and then all of a sudden the the generator of the theater kicks on. Of course, it's making a lot of noise, and you're thinking, oh, good, they've got light and power now. But you don't want that because the thing is, this generator is making so much noise, so you have to go shut it off. And of course, that leads to another death of a character. Well, they, you know, it's like it, it, it's hard for the, the the geek and me to not criticize the aliens a little bit. It's like, OK, I know that's not the point of the film, that they're just a plot device, but it's like, all right, <laughs> they have such good hearing, but they got zero olfactory senses. They'll be right next to a sweating probably pooping himself and peeing himself <laughs> a little bit human being that's just horrified and trying to not make his any noise it's like yeah. okay so they no olfactory no sight which yeah. i don't buy it but also like if their hearing is that good couldn't they pick up your, your heartbeat the blood rushing around in the veins or you know the, 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 the heavy the breathing poop that's coming out squirting out of your butt you know <laughs> Just loud farts all over the place. This, maybe that would be such a century overload because uh, overload because everyone in the city is just and their heads explode or something. Yeah, That'd be great. And then the and then the final scene is the uh, occupying aliens just kicking corpses to the side of the road so they can set up the block party. <laughs> I think there is a I you know when I was thinking of the criti criticisms I had of of it were. When the the military blew up the bridges, and I'm like, wait a minute, the the aliens are all, all over the world. You're you're literally blowing up the bridges and trapping the people that are in the city in the city, and that that didn't make any sense to me. Now I understand they did it. They finally established that the aliens don't like water. Yeah, uh, they can't cross running water or something like that. Like they're vampires, uh, <laughs> they drown. Why is water always the thing that undoes the alien bad guys in it? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, what was it? it? Yeah, the, the M. Night Shyamalan, too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's oh, right. and, and V. Wasn't V like that? I don't recall, which is dumb because they all look like lizards. Yeah, let me look that up. I think, uh, let's see, <laughs> aliens in V hate water. Uh, let's see, to be honest, that water hurts aliens. Ridiculous. Earth is, okay, there, there, okay, I, the visitors. Okay, so they intended to steal the world's wall. Okay, well, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <don't know> what... <laughs> Somehow Man, it's that, corrosive, that, but... That that new V show sure sucked. I know that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> Man, what a piece of shit that was. I couldn't even get through the third episode of that, but we're talking about this other thing. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it, it, was, it was one of those things that kind of threw me for a loop because... Where am I? on this screen am i still here there you are okay uh so it, it threw me for a loop because i was like we know especially from the globe that she's looking at because we see like a radio forecast that are, that's playing and they see this globe and they have all these locations all over the world taped los angeles and R moscow and everywhere and i'm I, I was just like well now that military just trapped everybody in the city <laughs> And then yeah. they're telling then they're telling everybody to get to the boats because the uh, aliens are afraid of water. I was like, well, what about when you reach the other bank? Yeah, uh, you, there's going to be aliens there too. What, what's the use of <laughs> blowing up the damn bridges? You just well, and they communicate with everybody via helicopter with loudspeakers. Like P -p 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 -p. it's like attention, we are about to firebomb the five boroughs. <laughs> Please make peace with your creator. <laughs> That's basically what they were doing. It, it, it didn't make any. I, that didn't make any sense to me. Um, but again, I, I suspended my disbelief. Just I, I, I was into it. That the reason I could accept it was just because of the actors and the way they were performing. That okay, they're ma they're they're making this movie for me, even if some of the things didn't make too much sense. The pacing of it had a, a nice um, kind of literary feel, like that kind of uh, flow is what you like in a novel that would be written by somebody that would write something like A Quiet Place, you know, yeah. like kind of a, a, a mid 90s Stephen King knockoff that was actually pretty good at it. Yeah, yeah, and it, it had some great highs and lows, and uh, there were there were moments. I don't know what theater, what kind of theater. I saw it in one of these PTX theaters or whatever they call them, where the surround it has the surround sound and it it, it sounds I, like someone's right behind you. And 
I saw it at the studio grill and I had lost my distance glasses um, in a, oh, no. in an alcohol fueled incident <laughs> and <clears throat> very embarrassing. And so I, I knew that I, it was all going to be a little bit blurry to me. And uh, yeah, so uh, it, I saw it. At blurry. You saw you saw figures going back and forth. It's not that bad, but okay, it was, I, you know, like uh, I couldn't read pretty the much, street signs. Yeah, I was about to say for a movie that's pretty much quiet with barely any dialogue, you, you kind of have to have those visuals to pull even a little bit. Oh no, I saw, I yeah, saw, okay. it. I could see it. <laughs> I, I could see it well enough. <laughs> no, I made sure to have my uh, my my far sight glasses on, but the. <laughs> but it was really cool that I I loved hearing the voices from behind. Hey, uh, and and. I yeah. I don't go to the theaters that much experience that I did that with Furiosa just to get that experience. But I, with, I'd like to see it like you saw it though. That, yeah, that that surround sound would have been cool. Yeah, it was really fun. And then when you know the the aliens are on their stampede chasing those helicopters and you, you feel the rumble in the theaters like oh, and it's like shaking you. It's like Jesus Christ, dude! It's like a herd of dinosaurs going by you. Yeah, that's cool. I I went to one movie that boasted the extra sound and it about uh blew my eardrums. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I try to go back to the theater and I see my girl in the hallway yelling at the uh or mouthing <laughs> at the attendants like it's too loud. <laughs> yeah, we actually had to do that one time in a some movie we saw that my partner was just like I this is too loud. We're either going to leave or just going to have to tell them to turn it down. So I went and told them, hey, can you take it down a notch? They go, oh, we're sorry. And they were very accommodating about it. So. Well, that's cool. Yeah. They told they told us they, that we could go back saying. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> they, well, when you meet, like most people here in the service industry in Atlanta are either really nice or really opposite of nice. There's no... <laughs> There's no middle ground. Some of them will be straight up rude to you. Hey, can you turn it down a bit? Hey, could you shut the fuck up for a bit? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a cashier that I can't interact with because she's just, <laughs> just <laughs> savagely rude to me. <laughs> well, the so <laughs> I, I the the movie when I like I said watching this movie it, it was a great experience. It, it there were some really heartfelt moments throughout it. Uh, I think if you haven't seen it and you've heard it this far, we haven't get. Well, there's some spoilers we had we revealed, but the, no, overall, it's no. It was yeah. it, it it was good. It was one of those films that's mainstream and doing well, but it deserves to people to be watching it. There weren't a lot of people um, in the theater when I saw it. It was definitely worth seeing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, check it out. It's a heartfelt, yeah. uh, cool movie. No, no real gore or, or genuine scares, and no. and no deep exploration of the backstory. But that's not why you go. So. And but you know, I I think it was a deep exploration of you know the human spirit and will yeah. will to live and will to die. You know, yeah. And, you know your individual freedom and what you want to do with it and how you choose to use the rest of your time. On on the planet, you know. Yeah, I've been and, thinking about it since I saw it, which to me is a sign of a of a good film. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I would totally give this five hamburgers plus a cheese fry. Yeah, uh, you know, a pile of a, a generous pile of of eyeballs, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's our rating system, by the way. It's yeah, uh, it's flawless. It's numerically superior to any thumbs up or thumbs down. A lot yeah. of scientific science went into it numbers yeah. crushed and so this is what we came up with yeah it's a good back pocket full of grapes this film. <laughs> uh well clay i guess that's about it for this a wonderful movie a quiet place day one i wonder if we're gonna get a day two and a day three they've really set it up to to go in and do that they're doing a third one okay a, cool. a third direct sequel to the second movie Okay, cool. So I'll be very much looking forward. Do you know if the same director is attached? or? I think it's the first guy. I think it's the original guy who's directing that one. He wanted a break from, you know, directing. And, and so that's what we you, what we got. And it's uh, John Krasinski. Yeah. So, yeah mm -hmm. oh, cool. um, or Michael, was it? I didn't keep it in my notes. You guys <laughs> can Google. You got this. Yeah, we were all, we, you know, I don't know about you, but I took a, a, uh, one of those three ring binders and I had uh, the, my lined notebook and I was just writing in the theater the entire time. Yeah. I had a moleskin notebook with a very bright flashlight. 
I bought seats right next to uh, other people when the whole theater was empty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love to do that too. And I uh, did you did you have your customary headlamp on? Because I, had I did. Yeah, yeah, I had my miner's hat. Yeah, the miner's hat <laughs> in full effect. <laughs> Guys, I guess that's about it. Thank you so much for joining us here on Cinematic Suffering. And uh, until our next movie review reveal, we will talk at you guys later. Take care, y'all. Peace. Bye.